last question. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's on the Yeah. She's, she's in the hospital? Yeah, she's in Jason's work. Or I don't know if it's called Jason's work anymore. Yeah. 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 Okay. Remember Becky? Becky, yes. Yeah, she um, had some tests done and so forth. Yeah, she has to prep for some tests. Yeah. It starts tonight. Okay. I think remember my sister Sally. She's back in the hospital again. Sally? Sally Dodson. And Connor has a broken finger. Oh, that's Connor? Yeah, well, I, I guess it's a broken hand because it's in his hand, his metacarpal. Remember Foss? Yes, yes. I was talking to him, but he's doing okay. Is he doing okay? He's doing better now. Yeah, did he find out when he's having that PET scan? No, he didn't. No, okay. I have two. Um, first one is uh, Peggy Grimm. Peggy? Yeah. Grimm? And the second one is my husband, Mark. He has a great big bump on the back of his knee. And his knee is really swelled and he can hardly walk. And I'm hoping it's not a blood clot. Okay. Because that's what it looks like. Is it red? Uh, is it remember red? Tim? It's here. not red, but his knee in the front. Really warm. Uh, he's got an appointment tomorrow morning at 8:30 at the doctor, so okay. hopefully, if not, get an emergency room just in case. They've got some blood clots. We don't want to mess around. No. Remember, Tim, he has Lyme's disease. Tim? Yeah, Memphis. Yeah, that's what it was. The little dog guy, Tim. What is it? The little dog guy, Lyme disease. Tim. Uh, I have to remember those names. Yeah. And remember all the people that was was being affected by this hurricane that's coming up the coast. Mm -hmm. I have some friends that live in North Carolina and they've been posting pictures and they've said they're getting where they're at. They're getting yeah. they're getting it really bad right now. Mm -hmm. And remember Jackie and Elliot. They're going to be flying tomorrow. Okay. Okay, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you tonight, Father God, for those who come out to Bible study tonight. Father, we do lift up these prayer requests to you of people with uh, different situations, medical situations. And Father, we think of Denise Hinkle, Lord, in the hospital. Father, we pray for her uh, with her situation, Lord, that uh, uh, the physicians there, the doctors will be able to handle whatever her situation is. Lord God, we give it to you. You know all what's going on with each and every one, Lord. Father, we think of uh, Vicki that's going through some tests and preparing, Lord. Father, we pray for her and again for the peace, Lord, and, and comfort and encouragement at this time. Uh, Father God, we, um, we pray for uh, Sally, Lord, and um, we lift her up in, in prayer to you, Father. We think of... Um, uh, Connor, Lord, with uh, the broken finger, Father, that uh, that will heal, Lord God. There's only so much you can do with situations like that, Father. And again, I always share these prayer requests that illnesses, Lord, just presses upon me that the uh, most important thing is to know Jesus is Lord and Savior for one day we won't have not sick bodies with any, any diseases or any situations, Father. And this is our hope that we have, Father. And at this time, lift up Fuzz with his breathing and his PET scan that has to go on, Lord. Uh, pray that that will get scheduled. And uh, thank you, Father, for uh, him drawing closer to you, wanting to know you as Lord and Savior. Father, and we 
think of Peggy Grim, Lord. We lift her up to you with uh, her condition. And, and uh, Mark, Father, for the bump on his knee, that uh, pray, Father, there's not a blood clot there. Father, we lift him up to you, Lord. Father, we think of Tim with Lyme disease, Lord. We pray for uh, for healing and medicine to deal with that, Father. That's a tough situation there with that, Lord, to have that. Father, we lift up Travis with his situation, Lord, what's going on. And we thank you, Father, that uh, he's able to get more medication. And I pray that you help him with his medical situation that's going on also, Lord, Father God. Father, we think of the ones with this hurricane coming up the coast. We pray for safety, Lord, um, and uh, for floods and the disasters, Father. We pray for the safety of the people, Lord, Father God, in their homes, Lord, Father, as this hurricane comes up the coast. Father, when we think of Jack and Elliot flying tomorrow, Lord, we pray for their safety um, to get back safe from where they're at, Lord God. Lord, Father, we lift up all these prayers to you and any unspoken and anyone who has any other prayers that did not share, you know the hearts, Father, you know our hearts, Lord. We lift it all up to you, Father. Now I pray that you would bless this time as we look at your word and James, speak to our hearts and help us to apply what we learn to our lives. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Okay, we're in... Um, of course, uh, James chapter 4, looking at uh, verse 7 here. Verse 7 says, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Okay, talking about submitting to God. Submit calls for more than just obedience. It means to subject oneself. It means the proud and others should decide once and for all, to be under God's authority, to let God be Lord in our lives, to give him control, and to quit trying to do as we choose. Instead, we must choose to do as he directs. You know, a person can accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior on one aspect, but not allow the Lord to be Lord of their life. And that's really what the call of the Christian is, to let the Lord be Lord of his life. Not just, it's not just enough to say, yes, I know Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Now I'm on my way to heaven. Uh, I'm good to go. I know when I die, I know where I'm going to go. You know, just to use a little slang, I shared this in Lancaster. When we do that, people, we're actually ripping ourselves off, to be honest with you, by not letting the Lord control our lives. You know, we really are. You know, just to, it's like this. If God can take care of our eternal life, our eternal destiny, Surely, he can deal with our temporary small life here on planet Earth that's only for a season, only for a few years, that's not eternal. You see? But it's a sad thing because many Christians today have not surrendered their life to the Lord. Just because you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior does not mean he's Lord of your life. You see? And he wants to be Lord of your life. He wants, as we're looking at James here, he wants, to, the Bible tells us, submit to God. Submit to him. You know, instead of submitting to, just to ourselves, instead, instead, we must choose to do this as he directs. Give the Lord our lives. As we saw, it says here in chapter 4, verse 1, conflict with others results from conflict within when we can't get along with other people, generally we are experiencing civil war in our hearts. The starting point for peace with others is peace within. And I think a lot of this is because we're still trying to control our own lives. We want to be in control of our own lives instead of letting 
God take control. Because see, when we let God take control, that's when we'll really have that peace. Amen. That, that's it. As it says in Philippians that we read all the time, the peace that passes all understanding, we read it, many maybe even know the verse. But once again, God has constantly uh, uh, put on my heart through conviction and all, just don't read it, Ron. Just don't memorize it, but live by what I'm telling you. You see? Just don't go through the motions. Just don't go through another Bible study because it's Tuesday night and this is what we do. See? Let it sink into our hearts. Because then, when it does, we'll have peace with ourselves, and then we can also have peace with others. That peace is found in allowing Christ to rule in our hearts. When we have his peace in our hearts, we'll be at peace with other people. That's interesting. When we truly have peace in our heart, we'll have peace with other people. You know, it's interesting because when you're um, around someone that's irritable, you know, it's interesting, struggling in an area, of course, they're irritated, they're irritable, they're not at peace. Something is going wrong there. It could be a situation within themselves, it could be with somebody else, but whatever the case is, we will not find peace with others until we have peace with ourselves. And that peace comes from God. And that comes from really, people, a surrendered heart to the Lord. And see, it's an ongoing thing. Do you know daily, daily, you have to surrender to the Lord? Daily. daily. It's not a one-time thing. Salvation is, but surrendering, giving God, letting God take over is a daily thing, you know? It's not a one-time thing. The peace is found in allowing Christ to rule your hearts. When we have peace in our hearts, we'll be at peace with other people. Without his peace, we are far more likely to try to manipulate and control others so we can have our own way. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And it's true. Think about this. Who doesn't want their own way? Everybody wants their own way. Everybody wants what they want. And they'll manipulate, they'll do whatever they can do to get their own way and they'll say how wrong somebody else is and they're right. True. Mm -hmm. Because, see, I'm never wrong because I know what's right. <laughs> see, this is how we are. You know, it's the human sin nature. You know, we're, we're, I'm right, he's wrong or she's wrong, and I've got to straighten them out and tell them like it is because they don't understand. <laughs> That's how we are. It's exactly it. Some worse than others. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And, you know, and uh, we'll manipulate to try to control so we can have what we want. I have some statements here. We are to be subject in obedience to God as our Lord. Living in peace with Christ and with his peace in us brings us into the peace in our relationships with others. Okay, uh, somebody want to read Colossians 3.15. Yes. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. 
You hear that? Rule. When you look at that word rule, let him, that means let the peace of God control your hearts. Let him be the rule. Let him, let the, let Christ work in and through you and see even through trials and turmoil, when you, and again, this is walking in the spirit. It's really what it is. It's letting go, yielding yourself to the spirit. And you have to, as it says in Ephesians, you have to ask to be filled with the spirit on a daily basis. Because remember people, think about it. I share this all the time. Most of the time we live by what? Feelings, circumstances, situations. That's how our life really goes. You know, if we're, like I shared the other week, if we're not feeling good, or, you know, we may not have a good day, or somebody said something to us in the morning, or, or the night before, and we couldn't sleep all night, we we're in turmoil over it, and then it just keeps going on and going, and then we start to get hostile, we start to, again, this is where bitterness and resentment starts building up. And people, that's from the pits of hell. You know? The Lord wants us to have peace with him. And you know, think about this. As you grow in your relationship with the Lord, peace needs to come from Christ. And I shared this the other week towards the end of the lesson. Knowing who you are in Jesus Christ. You know? Think about that. When you really know who you are, again, we may get offended by people, and a lot many times we offend without even realizing it. But you know, when you really know who you are in Christ, you can let it go. You really can. Think about it. You're the child of the king of the universe. You're the child of the one who created everything that ever existed. You're his child. You have an inheritance. And what's the first part of that inheritance? The Holy Spirit, which was given to you upon your accepting Christ. You have Jesus Christ's spirit living inside of you. You know, this is why you can say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I pray for so and so. If he or she was saved, they would be different in their actions and their attitudes. You see? And knowing who you are, you're a child of the king. You, you know, as I shared on Sunday, you're, you're joint heirs of the kingdom. You have the kingdom, you see? And one day, when we go into his kingdom, we're gonna have new bodies. We're, gonna, we're not gonna have illnesses no more. We're not gonna be sick. We're gonna live for all eternity with perfect bodies. What we have is so extraordinary, you see? And this is what we need to think on. I believe many times as Christians, because we live here on planet Earth, we dwell too much on what's going on here. And many times because of what's going on, our joy is stolen because of the fact that we live in the situations and we live by our circumstances and situations instead of realizing who we are in Christ and that this is only temporary, and our real home is not here. You ever think about that? That your real home is not here? You know? You have a dual citizenship. In other words, if you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior, right now you're a citizen right here on planet Earth, the United States, but you're also a citizen in heaven. That's a dual citizenship. You know, and if you... And I think as we focus more on this, like I love what it says in Philippians on the different things to think on, on things that are true, on things that are pure. You know what I mean? These are the things. I think that 
you know, and there's so much chaos going on in our corruption out there. And, and I believe as a minister of the gospel, we are close to the rapture, close. I mean, it's coming together. It's got to be in the word. It's, it's coming together. The Lord will come in time. And again, uh, as a follower of Jesus Christ, it's exciting. You know, to live at this time right now is exciting, if you think of it in the right way. Because this is the time we were meant to be here and God has a plan and a purpose because it's close to the end and God is calling us out to be that light in the darkness. And if we don't have that peace, if we don't have that, where are they gonna see it from? Where's the lost gonna see it from? Where are they gonna see? Us just like them? Acting the same way, no difference. You see? Pastor, some of the churches in the uh, New Testament were fooled by some um, folks that went straight away. They thought the time was coming and they hold up. They were anonymous Christians. Yeah. Like they didn't go out. They didn't do anything. They were waiting for the Lord. Yeah, they actually, that's right, Travis. And actually, some of them stopped working. They stopped doing everything. They just sat and waited. And that's not what the Lord called us to do. The Lord says that we need to be about his business. And it's like this. As we know that the time is near, I mean, you know, not only that, people are dying every day. Every day. And it's not just from coronavirus. It's from everything and any. You know, we just, because we're temporarily here. This is not the permanent residence. This is why, you know, we need to be out there. We need to have that, you know, we're not going to be perfect people because we're sinners saved by grace. But the more that we walk with the Lord, the more people can see Christ in us, you know, even through turmoils that are going on in, in our lives. And that speaks multitudes to, through people that are going through hard times. And then they see us as Christians and how we're dealing it. You have to understand People do watch and observe. They do. They really do. How she or he or she goes to church and look how, you know, of course all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But I'm here to tell you the unsaved are ready to, the unsaved, man, they're, they're ready to point the finger right away. You know what I mean? And say, well, look, he or she goes to church and look how they act. They don't act no different than me. As a matter of fact, he or she's more stressed out than I am, and, and look what I'm going through, and they're more stressed out than what I am, and they're Christian. It's it, it's true. You know? So we need to let the peace of Christ rule, rule our lives. You know? As I have this memory verse as we move on here, Galatians 2.20. You know, letting Christ, being crucified with Christ. Uh, we read that all the time. Somebody I know, uh, Martha, uh, memorized it. But I want somebody to read that verse to me. Galatians 2.20. I think Vicki even had it down there. Does anybody else know Galatians 2.20? It's a good memory verse. Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me, gave himself for me. Thank you, Connie. That's, a, that's one of my favorite verses. You know, because it, like I said, you, you really think about that. I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. See, now think about that. If it's no longer you who lives, but Christ lives in you, therefore, shouldn't the peace be there? Be able to come out? Because it's not you See, you have to understand, the sin nature, the, the old nature, is full of worry, anxiety, stress. You follow me? 
But when you're in the spirit, that's not there. Because you have, that's Christ coming out of you. You see what I'm saying? And this is uh, what needs to be. It's no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. And I live by faith of the Son of God. He died and gave his life for me. So you're living by faith. And if you're truly living by faith, you're going to have the peace. Living in peace with Christ and with his peace in us. Hear that? Living in peace with Christ and with his peace in us. See, his peace can be in us as we draw upon Jesus. You know, I know, you know, I'm just like everybody else, a work in progress. I have not achieved any perfection, uh, any way, shape, or form. But I can remember many times and struggles in my own life, and I'd be kneeling down and just praying to the Lord to help me in a different situation, crying out to the Lord. Crying out to the Lord, and I have to share with this. There, were, there have been many times that I felt the peace. Just the peace. Saying to me, Ron, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. That peace, unexplainable, spiritual, supernatural peace. In the midst of a mess. In the midst of turmoil. You know, and we're all going to have no one's exempt from turmoil. No one. Like it says when we started James, when you fall into trials and tribulation, didn't say if, it said when, because we're all going through it. But as you give it to the Lord, you can have that peace and hope. And there's that, I know I've experienced it, there's a calmness. A calmness that comes over you. And you know it's going to be okay. You know it's going to be okay. You know, um, I'll share a story with you one time. Uh, this just come to me. When we lived in New Jersey a long while back, and um, I was out there. Um, we had went someplace, and we had a, I had a pickup truck, and it broke down at the, um, near a food store we were at. And uh, Angela was able to get a ride home, and I stayed with the truck, and then we had the storm coming up, a bad storm. And I was praying, I got some help there, and. I was gone for a long period of time. And of course, back then, it wasn't the cell phones like we have today and so forth. You know, because um, uh, I think I was in my, my 30s there, a long time ago. <laughs> anyway, Angela was praying, praying for my safety there. And here, the Lord put on her heart Make him his lunch. He's going to come in soon. Just make him his lunch. And I remember uh, cold, wet, and all this stuff. And uh, I came in in the kitchen, and there was a sandwich on the table and all. And she says, I knew you were coming. She says, Lord told me, make you your lunch. You're going to come soon. And I said, wow. That was really awesome. Just how, because she was praying. She was praying. And the Lord gave her a piece and said, make him his lunch. He'll be, he's coming soon. And, and I think within that 15 minutes or so, I had walked in the house. You know? Just a testament. Just, just gave to me. Share that with you. But, you know, she had prayed. That's prayer. That's peace. He's okay. He's, he's going to be okay. He's coming in soon. That's the Spirit of God. You see? That's how He works. He gives us that peace. Tells us, you know, 
He prepares us. You know, it's just someone to just. I didn't know I was going to share that. I just. You know, it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay. The last thing was on my mind. But it's funny how spirit works. You know? Okay. Living yes. in. Yes. Yeah. I was asked a question the other day, and I can't remember who it was, and they asked if if we prayed for the Holy Spirit. I just I just figured we pray to God, we pray to the Holy Spirit, we pray to mm -hmm. Jesus. Is there yeah? Is there something we pray? We that? pray to we could pray to God, the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the one who went to the cross for us, and it's through Jesus that we're saved, and it's through Jesus. That we have the Holy Spirit. So no, we can't pray to the Lord. We can pray to the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Through Jesus Christ. Okay. It's, it's through Jesus. That's why every time when you're done praying. You always pray. In the name of Christ. In Jesus' name. You well, always say Spirit, The Holy Spirit is part of you. Because if you are upset about something. He said I can take what is on your heart. And give it to God. He prays for us. Oh, absolutely. The Holy Spirit will pray. Absolutely, Doris. When we're, when we're so, the Bible tells us this. When we're in such distraught where we don't, something catastrophic happens in your life. You don't even know how to, how to even pray. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit will intercede for us. Mm -hmm. And right now, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. Always. The Lord of Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father. And again, you're correct with that, the Lord's. When we do not know how to pray, the Holy Spirit intercedes and prays for us. You know, because, and again, the Holy Spirit knows our needs and intercedes for us. But when we're directing our prayer, we can pray, the Holy Spirit, we can pray, Father. We can pray, Holy God, Lord, all of this, but we always end it in the name of Jesus Christ. You always end it in Christ's name. Because remember, you are righteous through the blood of Christ. You are righteous. And you are co-heirs with Jesus. You know? It's pretty awesome. But thanks for sharing that. Okay. What well, makes me feel with they ask Travis, they're trying to set each one up in an office of their own, and it's not like that at all. No, they're no, they're combined. No, the, the 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 Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one in three, as we know. That's the Trinity. Yeah. You know that that's the Trinity. It, it works like this. This is how you know. Just to make sure you understand, this is how prayer gets answered. Prayer gets answered um, for the fact that, you know, Jesus is our Lord, is our Savior, right? So we have a direct line to God through Jesus Christ, see? And then through Jesus Christ and then through the Holy Spirit that indwells within us. You know, this is why our prayers get answered. People that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, as I shared this, their prayer don't get answered. The only prayer that ever will get answered by an unsaved person is the prayer of asking for forgiveness, of asking Jesus Christ to come into their lives, that they realize that they are a sinner. Other than that, Dolores, uh, an unsaved person can pray to God, can pray to, to whatever, you know, even can pray to Jesus. But if they're not saved, God's not going to hear that prayer. Well, I just feel that the Holy Spirit is an encourager. Mm -hmm. as he, Jesus said, how give you a help me. Yeah. And he's right. an encourager. Well, the Holy Spirit is what works through us. Yes. The Holy Spirit is what guides us, directs us, convicts us. That's the Spirit. In other words, that's the whole, that's the end result. In other words, it's like this. That's how Christians are set apart from non-Christians. Because it's like this. We all sin. But the big difference is with the Christian, because we have the Holy Spirit in us, we get what I call the big C, the conviction. You know, we get the conviction because it's the Spirit that lives in us. The Spirit says to, says to me, 
Ron, don't go there. That's not a good place to go. I won't go there. The Spirit says, Ron, I'm going to guide you and direct you where I, through the reading of the Word, the Spirit gives me insight and understanding of the Word. The Spirit directs me. The Spirit is Jesus' Spirit with inside of me. And it guides me, it directs me, it convicts me. It, it, it mourns when I, when I fall into sin. You see what I mean? Because it's, it's Jesus' spirit that's inside of us. You know, and you know, this is why, this is why, this is something really to understand. This is why when you're truly saved, people, you cannot be the same as before. That's impossible. Because you have Jesus Christ, Spirit, the Holy Spirit in you. Therefore, how can you be the same as when you were lost? You can't. You can't. And this is why if you're truly saved, the Bible tells us in John that you will bear a fruit. If you're truly saved, your character will start to change, different things about you. You still, you got to understand, we still have a sin nature. But the thing is, we have convictions and we don't feel right when we do fall into sin and we confess it and want to get it right. There's a big difference. But as we're saved, we have convictions and we want to walk with the Lord. We want to walk with the Lord and we should have spiritual growth in our lives. We should be growing and people ought to be able to say, there's something different about the Lord's there. There's something different about Esther. There's something different about her that, I don't know what it is, but there's something different. She or he's not the same anymore. You see? Because it's the Holy Spirit. Now, if one professes to be saved, then there's no change in his life. That's not true salvation. That's not true salvation. Because it's impossible to have the Spirit in your life the spirit live inside of you and you be the same person that you are, you know, spiritually. You know, like I said, there, there's going to be convictions, there's going to be, and as you grow, as you grow, there should be more convictions in your life, as you grow. Okay? But that's an interesting, when you talk about the Holy Spirit, that's a whole thing within itself that I can, I can actually, I did it before, I can do, I'd be in the future a good study study on the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? Because really the, the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ inside of us. Guides us. This is why, remember, Jesus lived on planet, this is like Jesus lived on planet Earth for 33 years. And that's what he told his disciples. He says, um, I'm going to leave. And when I leave, I'm going to send the helper, which is the Holy Spirit. Now you have to understand they had Jesus living on planet Earth. We have the best. If you look at it, I, I love to share this. We have the best. In the Old Testament, God spoke through who? The prophets. The prophets, man. You know, the prophets, they would come and speak. This is what the Lord says. You see? Now, the New Testament, what did you have? You had Jesus on the scene. Jesus walked on planet Earth. But listen, Jesus couldn't be. Ever. Jesus wasn't everywhere at the same time. Remember, um, a good example of that is look at the woman at the well. Jesus was had a divine appointment with the woman at the well, and the disciples went off to go get food. So they didn't know what went on with Jesus, with the woman at the well. That was a divine appointment, right? And then when they came back, they were trying to understand what was going on. And they asked him if he wanted some food, and he says no, because, you know, he, he was the bread of life, he went on to say, and so to speak. But I'm sharing that because Jesus was not everywhere. You and I have what? The Holy Spirit. So you and I have Jesus 24-7. Praise God, hallelujah. We have all of it. We have all of it. And just as you said, Jesus could be everywhere. The Holy Spirit can be here plus all over the world. How do you explain that? I don't you know. You can't. I just take God's word. Right. It's faith. It's faith. And we know it to be true. Because, see, to understand these truths, Dolores, 
is coming from the Spirit. To understand salvation is coming from the Spirit. To understand you're a sinner comes from the Spirit because the lost don't realize they're sinners. They think that only people that go, many of them think that only people that are incarcerated or, or uh, murdered someone is, is a sinner. So for you to realize that you need a Savior is coming from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is everywhere. See, and the thing is, think about this. The world is in going wrong right now, but I'm here to tell you, the Spirit is still here. You see, when the tribulation comes, God will take the Spirit out of here. That's when it's all, praise God, you and I won't be here. Hallelujah. But when the tribulation comes, God's spirit will leave and elect Satan rule for that short, for that seven year period there. Okay? But uh, right now, that's what's still holding this planet together is the spirit of God. Even though he's a... See, God's not asleep right now. And God knows all that is going on. And he's allowed for his purpose. But the spirit is just like the Lord's saying true. The spirit is throughout this world right now. You know, it's pretty awesome there. Okay. But uh, thanks for sharing that because I love to talk on that, you know, and I love, I, like I said, I did a study on the Holy Spirit. It's, it's, it's awesome, you know what I mean, right? to, to understand that. Okay, uh, let's continue as we have a little time here left. We all want to call the shots in life. How can we learn to let God have control moment by moment? Question, how can we learn to let God have control moment by moment? Anybody? Submission. Good, Travis. Submission. Surrender yourself. It's like we talked about here. Submit to God, verse 7. Submit. And you have to submit on a daily basis. On a daily basis. You know, and again, walking with the Lord. I like it to say here, control. Moment. I like this wording that my book says. To let God have control moment by moment. Because really... That's what walking with the Lord is. It's moment by moment. Moment by moment. And you know, that's why throughout our day, we need to daily be in communion with the, with the Father. And you know, we should be talking with the Father throughout your day. You know, goings and comings and this and that. He's there. He's with you 24-7. His Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You don't have to go, go get him or go call him up, right? Go find out where he's at, if he's busy or not. You know, he's, he's you know, I've heard somebody say one time, but I have such little things. You think he's not too, you know, I think he'll mind. Of course, God, God loves you to come to him. Why do you think that we have trials and tribulations? So we'll go to him because he understands that if it's all going good, you know what it is, people? Don't call me, I'll call you. Right? Don't call me, I'll call you. That's it. Hey, I'm, I'm going good. Have you read your Bible today? No, no, no. I'm, uh, I'll get to it tonight. But I'm doing it. Today I'm having a really good day. No Bible. You see? Every day. You should have time for the Lord. He wants time for you. He wants time. That's why it's a relationship. That's why we don't practice religion. God's laid down on my heart as I came here as your pastor to, to put into you. It's not religion. It is a relationship. A love relationship. And when you're in love with the Lord, you want to have time if you really love him, you want to have time for him. And it's so awesome, you guys, because he'll, he reveals himself in so many ways. He reveals himself. And many times we get so caught up with the chaos and the disruption that we don't even see him, and he's right there. We don't even see him. We're just gone. 
But he's there. He's there to reveal himself to us. So as we have here, Travis said it, submit. What's the difference between having peace with Christ through salvation and living in the peace of Christ in our daily lives? I talked about that. What's the difference of salvation peace and peace in our daily lives? There's two differences. Inner peace. It's an inner peace. It's a spiritual peace. Right. Right. When we get saved, that's right. When we get saved, there's an inner peace that comes with inside of us. When you when I accepted the Lord, it was awesome. It was awesome. I remember kneeling by my sofa back in 1983 and asked Christ into my life. And it was just awesome. I can't even express, express it, but it was, it was awesome, you know? And it's that inner peace. But see, in our daily life, we have to go to the Lord for that in our daily life. Why? Because we, we battle our old nature. We're, it's a battle. James, Romans 7 talks about this. Paul talks about this in Romans. We're in a constant battle. We got the new nature and the old nature. You see? And the one we feed upon the most is the one we will become more like. We feed upon the new nature, we'll become more like the new nature. We don't do Bible study, we just let it go. We don't talk to the Lord, we don't fellowship, we don't have prayer time. We'll live many times just like the laws, just like everybody else. See, and we won't have a testimony. See, and remember, Where's testimony come from? The word <coughs> test. God tests us. We have testimony. And it's our trust, it's our faith. It's our walk with him, moment by moment. How would living in Christ's peace help you live in peace with others? Well, if you're at peace with the Lord, when others may offend you or say things, it won't get to you. You'll be able to let it go. And you know what's pretty awesome when you do that? You'll go off and say, wow, I can't believe it. I have. I really kept it together. Thank you, Jesus, because it was you. It wasn't me. So then you glorify the Father because you know that it was him that allowed you to act the correct way. Now think about it the other way. You walk in the flesh. You get ticked off. Then you get in your car, you go away. Then you're even more, you're angry at the person and you're angry at yourself because you didn't handle it the right way. Man. And they hurt, and the other people hurt me too. Carry on like that. And they know that I go to church every week. <laughs> this is it. This is what happens. You see? But when we walk in peace with Christ, the peace that passes all understanding, we can stop letting someone bother us or get to us. What you do, I shared this before, you pray for the person. If you're truly praying for a person, can you hold bitterness, anger, and resentment against them? Not if you're truly spiritually led, right? <clears throat> you can't. So that's one of the best ways to deal with it. Because I'm going to tell you something. He's all now we're all there. Hardest thing in life is dealing with relationships and within people. And James here, this is talking about conflict. And see, when you can handle conflict the right way, it's by submitting your, as we talked about in verse 7, submitting yourself to God is how you can handle conflict the right way. You see? Praying, seeking Him, submitting yourself. Okay? 
List areas where you live in doubt, where you live in doubt, fear, and struggle, and worry. This is something on your own. This is just some application ideas in my workbook here. List areas in, in life where you have doubt, fear, and struggle, and worry. What causes you to worry most? What are you most fearful about right now? <clears throat> what scares you? What frightens you right now? What are you worried about? You see? Submit it to God and let him take it. He wants it. Get it off of you. Give it to him. And claim Romans 8.28. All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. You hear that verse? It's not just in the pages. Do you believe that verse? I even say that to myself, Ron, do I really believe that verse? Believe that verse. I know it, I quote it, I memorize it, do I really believe it? Do I really believe that he's going to take a lot of my bad things in life and turn them around for good? Absolutely. Why? Because he says it and his word is truth. And you either believe it or you don't. And if you don't, you're making him a liar. As the Bible tells us that. If you don't believe it, you're turning around and making the Lord a liar. You're saying, I don't believe that. All things work together for good for those who love God. Say, that's the prerequisite right there. For those who love God. In other words, for those who are saved and are called according to his purpose. You see? He's going to work all your situations out. List conflicts you have with other people. Let's conflict you out with other people. Begin to pray over these lists and commit them to God. List, this is something you can do on your own. List conflict that you have with somebody. All of us do in some way or another have conflict with somebody that we struggle with, gives us a hard time. All of us do. None of us have perfect relationships. That's unrealistic. We're all struggling at some point with somebody. Begin to pray over the list and commit it to God. Ask for his help to overcome them. Pray for victory, for peace of Christ in your heart and in your relationships. Then it goes on and says here in verse 7, resist the devil. Resist the devil. <clears throat> Suggest that we are to not ever to submit to the devil. The Greek word for resist is a military term. It means to take stand against or to withstand an attack. When we submit to ourselves to God, his powerful grace enables us to resist the devil. That is to stand against him rather than to bow down over, over by him. I'm sorry, to be bold over him. This resistance is possible only through the strength God's grace provides us as we submit to him. As we submit to the Lord, God's grace will give us the ability to resist the devil. To resist. Remember that verse? We'll close on this and pick it up. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. For there is no temptation that is taking you, such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted, but will make a way for you to escape that temptation. Let's look what that verse goes on to say. In other words, through the grace of God, he will allow you to get through whatever the temptation is. But that's a good one. Just want to, somebody want to read that? I quoted something. Somebody want to read 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And we'll close. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. That's right. Hear that? 
He will, I like his translation, will provide, uh, will provide a way out, an escape that you will not fall into. You see? It says here, <clears throat> as I finish up here. On our own, we cannot win against the devil. When we resist the devil in the Lord's strength, he will flee from us. Like a bully when challenged, the evil one will run away. Will he return? You can count on him. He certainly will. Spiritual warfare will be over only in the life to come, not in this life. We must be ever on guard. And we'll continue this on the next one. Okay? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise and we thank you tonight for this Bible study, Father God. Father, I praise and thank you for the peace that passes all understanding that you give us, Lord. The true peace that we can have, even in the midst of turmoils and chaos going on, Lord. Father God, that we know that you are a God that is in control, Lord God. And Father, that you are our Father and we can call you Father. Because see, we are in a relationship with you, Father. It's not religion, Lord. And Father, I pray that you guide us and direct us as we go through our daily days, Lord. I pray, I pray, Father, that you will give us strength. Father, I pray that we would submit to you, Lord. I pray that we would denounce Satan through the blood of Jesus Christ, Father. I pray that you would guide us and guard us as we walk with you. I pray, Father, for the peace that you will give us. And I pray, Father, that we would be about your business, that we would share our faith. And in these times that we live in now, so many people need to hear the gospel, Lord. <clears throat> Father, I pray that we would step out of our comfort zone and talk to individuals, share with them about about you, Lord. I praise and I thank you for this Bible study. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone.